Hello, Internet! It's nice to see you. Many of you have asked how to find the key of a song. This is one of those situations where music theory is a lot like love. It's a very simple idea, but it can get complex. So we start from the simple situation and then we move toward the more difficult ones. In this video, I assume you have the chords of the song, whether because you find them online or because you transcribe the song. If instead you want to find the key of a song completely by ear, so not starting from the chords, the procedure is slightly different, and I will do that on video if enough of you request the video of finding the key of a song by ear in the comments. But let's see how to find the key of a song starting from the chords. Step number one, if the song starts and ends on the same chord, then it's likely, just likely, not sure, that the song is in that key. So if a song starts with a C major chord and ends in the C major chord, it's very likely the song is in C major. If a song starts with a G minor chord and ends with a G minor chord, it's very likely that song is in G minor. Now, many songs do not start and end with the same chord. And even if they do start and end with the same chords, we need to check. So let's go straight to step number two. Do a chord inventory. What does that mean? First of all, take all the chords in your songs. Then compare those chords with the chords that are in every key. Now, if you don't know what are the chords in all the keys, you can find all of them in the free Beginning Music Theory ebook that you can download at this link. So then the idea is to try and match the chords that you have in your song with the chords that are in every different key. So for instance, if your song has as chord G major, C major, and D major, and you compare those three chords with the different keys, you will find that there are only two keys that contain G major, C major, and D major, and those two keys are the G major key and the E minor key. Now, if your song is G, C, D, Since there is no E minor chord in the chord progression, it's very likely that the song is in G major. Or, for instance, your song can contain the chords E minor, C major, G major, D major. Again, there are only two keys that contain all those chords, and those are again G major and D minor. But this time, your chord progression starts with E minor, and if you keep playing, you notice that the chord progression also ends with E minor, so the most likely key is the key of E minor. Another example, your chords are C major, G major, A minor, F. I totally stole this chord progression from Let's Be by the Beatles. There are only two keys that contain all those four chords, and that are the key of C major and A minor. And since the song starts in C major, and if you go and check the song, it also ends with C major, it's very likely that the key is C major. Now, one note here, sometimes songs use chords that are out of key. So, for instance, if you have a chord progression like G, B flat, D, C, there is no key that contains all those four chords. So, what do you do is you try to find the best fit. For instance, the key of G contains the chord G, D, and C. The key of F will contain the chords B flat and C. So the best fit is the key of G, and this B flat chord is an out of key chord that works in the key of G. Again, sometimes some of the out of key chords still work, and so you have to ignore the chords that do not fit. Also notice that if the two candidates are the key of G and the key of F, there is no F chord in this chord progression, and the chord progression starts with a G, so it's very, very likely that the key is G major. Another example is a chord progression like G, F, D, C. Now, the key of G contains G, C, and D, so we have three chords in there. But the key of C contains C, F, and G, so we have three chords in there. So if we just count the number of chords, those two keys are equally likely to be the key of the chord progression. But again, the chord progression starts from G, and if you play a G at the end, it sounds like it finishes there. Mm -hmm. 
So to break the tie here, we need step number three. Step number three is, by ear, what chord will sound best as the final chord? What chord stops the song? And this chord is likely the key of the song. So if I play G, F, D, C, will this sound best if I have C as a final chord, or will it sound best if I have G as a final chord? Or better, which one of those two chords, C major or G major, will work best as the final resting chord for the song? Let's hear it. Let's end with C first. And let's end with G. To my ear, the G chord sounds best as the closing chord, so since the chord progression starts on G and it sounds like it ends really well on G, then G will be my vote for the key of that chord progression. And the F chord is just an out-of-key chord. So again, step number one, if the song starts and ends on the same chord, then this chord is likely to be the key of that chord progression. But they have to check, and you check by doing step number two, do a chord inventory, meaning check if the chords in the song match the chord on a specific key. And the key with the most chords in the song is the one most likely to be the key of the song. Step number three, by ear, decide which chord is the final resting chord of the song, which chord will actually stop the song. Sometimes songs don't end on a specific chord, but they just fade out, so you cannot determine just by listening to the song which one is the end chord, but you can try with your guitar and see which chord will actually stop the song if you play it there. Now, those three steps are usually enough to determine the key of a song. And the only real difficult part is to do the inventory on step number two, but that's easy to do if you have the tables of all the chords in all the keys just right under your nose, and again, you can find them on the beginning music theory free ebook. But there could be a problem. What if you have a mismatch between step number one and step number two? So for instance, let's take a song like Sweet Home Alabama. The chord progression is D, C, G, D. The song starts in D, and end in D. So it will seem that according to step number one, the key is D major. But if you do step number two, the three chord D, C, and G are perfectly compatible with the key of G and not with the key of D, as the key of D will have D, G, and A as major chords. So what is happening here? Well, as it happened, Sweet Home Alabama is in D, but not D major or D minor. Sweet Home Alabama is built on a mode called D mixolydian. In D mixolydian, you have the same chords as G major, but the main chord is not G, it's D. Now, modes are not really hard to explain. They are just long to explain, and that's normal because you can do a lot more with modes than you can do with major and minor scales, so it takes a lot more time to explain everything you can do and to understand them. If you are curious about modes, I suggest you check out my course Master of the Modes, when we do everything there is to do about the modes, how to play them on the guitar, how to play a lead with them, how to play chord progressions with them, and how to play them over every chord progression to improvise interesting and creative solos. As long as you can play a few chords on the guitar, you know enough to start taking Master of the Modes. But anyway, as long as your song is in a simple major or minor key, the three steps we have seen in this video will cover it. And so that's how you find the key of a song. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any friends who's interested in how to find the key of a song, share this video with him. If you have any kind of comments, questions, or requests, please write them down in the comments. I always read all my comments and I do video based on them. This is Tommaso Zilli of MissDutyForGuitar.com. And until next time, enjoy!